Welcome to GNN News. I'm your host, Derek Vander. Last week, our news channel was taken over by Black Wolf loyalists. Unfortunately, that means it's true. Black Wolf has won the presidency. This week, he actually designed some new starships and military ships that should be taking flight sometime soon. But we'll see how that goes. Anyways, in other news... Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here, and I'm here to bring you the next episode of our Aurora Let's Play. So last time we left off, we were designing our first warships, which uh, I kind of messed up and missed out on uh, weapons. So I've actually gone back in and added them as well as some power plants to power those weapons. So I added railguns. Now this is very early simple weapons. Um, the railguns, they aren't even turreted, so the whole ship has to aim at the target. Now. These are sort of designed to be sort of the uh, nose breaker kind of ships, um, light corvettes that just go in and they just slam a bunch of rounds into the enemy ships. Um, they have a pretty short range of 80,000 kilometers, but these are sort of quick and dirty, get in, punch them, get out um, kind of ships. Uh, eventually we'll start diversifying the fleet a bit, you know, adding command ships, missile frigates, um, just all kinds of different ships so these are more of the uh, getting close with heavy armor and just punch away um, I made sure to keep the engine and maintenance life at decent uh, time so it did up the tonnage a bit um, but luckily with everything added it's still a pretty decently sized ship um, which should do pretty well at protecting uh, what we currently have while we're exploring we should need too much um, but while we're at it, I also have begun uh, adding a few orders real quick to the freighter fleet. Um, currently, they're going to go drop a mass driver off of another asteroid that we have inspected. Um, and then they're going to go back out and uh, drop some automated mines on it. While I believe this should be... Uh, let me... Where is it? Ship. Oh, where is it? There we go. Uh, so yeah, so this is overhauling, I believe it's actually, yeah, it's pretty much overhauled. Um, yeah, so this should be good to go. Uh, yeah, no orders uh, orbiting. Um, so we're going to send this guy back out to explore. So we're going to go back over to uh, fleet, standing orders. Uh... Survey, ch -ch 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 -ch. survey next. There we go. Just survey nearest. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess we can do survey nearest body. Uh, secondary standing order is. Uh, well, we're not too worried about this because right now we're only surveying Earth's whole system. So fuel less than 20%. Refuel from colony or refuel at colony, I guess, yeah. And then supply points less than 20%, resupply calling. All right, there we go. So this should uh, send this guy back out. Let's look. There we go. So now they're deployed and it's making its moves. All right, so we'll close that. Give it another couple minutes. Oh, maybe it's still doing the overhaul. Thought it was complete, but it looks like it might actually, yeah, it looks like it's still doing an overhaul. So, uh, what I was going to do while I, I was hoping that would send off, but since that's not, uh, we're actually going to design our first jump ship. Um, we're, because it's about time we start grab exploring and uh, going through the different systems. So, let's create another survey ship, but this time I think we're going to call it a survey. Because uh, originally survey ship, so we had that one, so we're going to call this one a uh, survey cruiser. It's going to be a bit different of a ship. It's going to have a commercial. Um, oh, wait, yeah, I forgot. Not a got to make this ship class. So this is the Los Angeles ship cruiser, or survey cruiser. Then what we're going to do is going to do improved gravitational sensors. Do two of them. And then we'll also add some geological survey sensors. Um, so this will fulfill both roles that the survey ship currently uh, fulfills that this is gonna replace. 
Now this is a military vessel already by default because of the survey stuff. So what I might do is just let it have the military engine since they're better engines anyways. Um, and this will make it quite fast. So we'll give it a few of them. And then let's see, is there anything we need up here? Not really. Do we want to have some search sensors? Probably some kind of sensors. Probably not search sensors though. So let's go in here, design maybe some thermal sensors. That way if there's any life or anything, we can kind of detect it. They don't have to be really great. Um, since we're going to fly over, sh over top of the planets and stuff. What we'll do is we'll say sensor size 2. So it's 100 tons, right? Let's see how much. I mean, that's 500 tons. That's that's barely anything for sensor size. So we'll go with this. Um, and then we're going to do a company name. I like to have it over here at the end. That way it's a little easier. And then we'll call this the thermal sensor. So T-A-T-S. Uh, sensor size. Uh, don't know where to get that 50 from. We'll say TH for this sensor size and then 500 tons. Or I could do 0.5 K. Ah, 500 tons is easier to read them. Alright, so there we go. Instant this guy. Then we'll refresh tech. Thermal sensors, there we go. So I have one of those so we can kind of uh, detect anything on planets. Uh, we're not too worried about rail guns or anything or fueling. Maintenance, there we go. So this is gonna have a deployment time of five years as well. It's sort of what I'm gonna shoot for for most things. I could do it longer, but to me, you know, it feels like crews wouldn't want to be out that long. It feels like um, that'd be a bit too long a time for crew. Um, they'd start to get a little upset. So we're gonna generally shoot for five uh, years worth of maintenance life. And then, got decent speed. Is there anything else? Maybe uh, another couple sensors to speed up a little bit and bring that maintenance life down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So that's about perfect. Just under five years. Um, that'll give us time to get out and get back. So we're not too worried. Now what's the fuel usage? What's its range? So that's very abysmal. Um, that's probably what I should actually put instead of these improved sensors. Uh, let's see, so 40 days at full power. So let's see if we can up that fuel, fuel, fuel. So let's start with the large. Oh yeah, we can put a few of these. That's better. That's closer to what I'm wanting. And then what? We'll throw on some small ones to try and cut down. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just throw on another large. There we go. This, yeah, okay. For saying that, I thought it was going up with smaller fuel storages in the uh, maintenance life, but okay. So that's perfect. That's right at about five years. Slows it down to about 2700, which is not bad at all. And then two survey, geological, two gravity, and then sensitivity is pretty good. So yeah, it's a military vessel. I mean, 6,000 tons is nothing at all, but it's just a survey ship. Um, just to protect crews from an RP standpoint, I'll give it three armor plates. That way they can uh, take a little bit more damage and be able to run away. But I don't think there's anything else we really need. It's just a survey ship. So most of the rest of this is just uh, guns. So yeah, I think this will be our survey cruiser and we'll lock design. So it's a uh, 7,000 ton, let's see. Let's uh, see which one of our shipyards can do that. And actually this one's about perfect. Now it is set up for the Black Wolf because this is originally what we were gonna build the Black Wolves on, but because we shipped over to the uh, larger design of that and we shifted to this one uh, we can't build them here so what we'll do is we'll retool over to the Los Angeles and looks like it's gonna take three years to retool that's quite a while um, but eventually we're, we're gonna I think we're gonna start researching into the tech that speeds this uh, construction up in the the build rate because I think right now we're still pretty low at 440 yeah 
But all right, so while that's getting underway, let's start ticking away at time. There we go. We have finished uh, maze on armor research. So let's actually get right into that since we're thinking about production. Uh, construction rate would be nice, but that's pretty high. Fuel production, jump point. This would be pretty handy to have if we decide to stabilize at some point, which would mean we wouldn't have to have jump drives on every ship. Um, which, speaking of which, that is something I just realized I forgot on that ship. So let's go here, matching. And that's only five production labs. Let's actually go with this one. They slightly less bonus, but they can have a lot more labs. So they get done a lot faster. So let's go back to our design for the Los Angeles unlock. And then we need to design tech, jump drives. There we go, jump engines. Oh, we actually don't have all the tech we need. That's odd. We build a commercial. No, we don't have the, we're missing the uh, fleet size. Well, that's not good. Thought I got those earlier. But guess not. So let's take some off. So for example, the shields, they are important to have, but even just having one will get it done by the time that ship is even able to be built, so that's good. Um, we do need to build some infantry so that when we actually have colonies, we can actually put the required amount of troops on it. But I don't think we're gonna have any anytime soon. So we drop that down to one, still gets done pretty quick. Savage module as well. EM sensor sensitivity. So a lot of these we can drop because we're not too worried about the, getting these done soon. I'm um, like, this would be a nice one to have, but I mean, we've already built the railgun ships for now. So until we decide to upgrade those with better guns, we're good on that. Uh, same goes with the reactor. So a lot of these actually probably are techs that we don't necessarily need right now. Shipbuilding rate, I do want to boost a bit. Um, Cause that would be handy to have and as well as research rate, but we can't boost that one up any. So let's uh, see, we got 32 available. So yeah, let's pump this up all the way. Then we're gonna take the rest of these guys and we're gonna go, let's see, uh, squadron uh, size. Grab somebody, there we go. And then squadron radius. All right, there we go. So those should get done at reasonable time. So yeah, about a year. So we're gonna go back to the shipyard. And instead of retooling, let's go. Okay, so start one. Yeah, so retooling for the Los Angeles. Uh, we're gonna add slipways. There we go. This way, uh, oh, actually, it's gonna take a while for the slipway. Let's see, set 10,000. Yeah, we're probably gonna need some capacity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say continual capacity upgrade since we're at 10,000. I don't know exactly how much it's gonna take for the company. For right now, the size we have, I believe we have the sixth efficient or fifth efficiency. Uh, or no, it's a fourth efficiency. I think we had fourth efficiency. Yeah, we need to unlock the fifth efficiency. So that determines the amount of ship that your jump engine is required. Um, so if you have a 10,000 ton ship and you have uh, efficiency fours, it has to be a 2,500 size jump engine. So if we're at 7,000, uh, without getting too heavy into the math, we're probably gonna need at least 10,000, which is what we're at. But just to be safe, we'll go up to 15,000. And we'll set that activity. Yes, because um, what this will do is this probably won't finish in time, but since we're doing continual upgrade, it'll actually, whatever it has done is fine. We can stop it there and then continue that after we build the ships. Um, it's pretty handy to have something like that, uh, upgrading like that. So let's look, okay. So yeah, when we're building this, this will be done in a few years. It's taken a little while, but all right, so let's carry on. Uh, freighter fleet, all right, so there we go. So our fleet has finished the orders, which means that we have dropped off all those mines. Uh, actually, I didn't want to go here. Um, on this planet, Herschel, and we want to make sure we point our mass driver at Earth, and let me make sure Venus, yeah, Venus is set to Earth. So there we go. So now, 
we'll start to have uh, resources that'll start to come from there once we put automated mines on there. Right now, we just have the uh, mass driver. So let's take this. Uh, it's New York, yeah. So we'll go to movement orders, go to Earth, refuel and resupply, load installation. Let's go automated mines. One sec. All right, welcome back guys. So right now I set up the uh, freighter fleet to go back and forth to that asteroid and drop off some more automated mines. And while we're doing that, that ship, I actually had to take off its orders. I realized that I had given it orders and it hadn't actually completed its uh, maintenance clock rewind. Um, and I found out there's actually a bug in C Sharp where if you give it orders, um, let me actually see, yeah. So if you give it standing orders while it's trying to do a rewind like that, it won't actually complete the rewind. It'll just sit there uh, stuck in the rewind, but not actually doing the rewind. Um, so I undid that and we actually just finished researching into, uh, oh, gotta open the window here. Um, our jump drive uh, max squadron size. So we've got that done. So we're going to look at power and fuel propulsion. Um, let's see. Is there anything else we want to do? Could go for engine efficiency six. So we do have five. Okay, so it's five we do have. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's see. What are we looking on? We just finished jump squadron radius. Um, and I believe we also finished jump squadron size. So theoretically, we should actually, let me check real quick. We should have the tech to build our jump drive. Let's go, is there anything we're missing? Nope, so we have everything to build our jump drive. So we can actually go ahead and uh, add that to our Los Angeles cruiser. So while we're thinking about it, I'm gonna go in here. Power propulsion. Uh, any of these that would be useful capacitor. So this is energy weapon recharge. Uh, fuel consumption, that's usually handy for commercial ships, not necessarily handy right now. So actually, let's look around. We do actually want to build some bigger ships, so having like flag bridges and stuff would be nice, but nothing I'm worried about right now. Maybe some fire control speed. Um, that would be handy. Let me see. You know, let's go for that. Um, that's handy for turrets. Um, once we get there, and it's handy because uh, the higher the fire control rating speed, the better you can track uh, fast moving missiles. So you actually want to get that pretty high up. And then let's see, active grab, beam fire control range. That wouldn't be a bad thing to have, but, uh, oh, I actually dumped all of our stuff into that. Don't necessarily need it that quick. That's uh, a little fast. So what, let's say want it by, you know, beginning of next year. And then let's look at uh, logistics. Nothing too crazy. I mean, cargo hold larger would be nice. Um, I'm not that worried about that. Energy weapons. Turret tracking. This is something we want. Yes, 100%. That will, because uh, there's certain techs you have to unlock to use turrets. Um, so let me take a look and see. Where is it, turrets? Uh, oh, that's right, I gotta go to turret design. And then here, uh, currently, we don't have any uh, weapons that are set up for that, but I believe, yeah, so we've got those two. So now we would just have to set up a beam or uh, turret. So actually, we might be able to build these pretty soon then. So I think we just have to have, at that point, a Gauss cannon or uh, 
Can you put, I don't think you can put rail guns in turrets, but I might be wrong about that. So I think we'd have to build a laser, which we don't have all the text for. That is something we're missing. That might be part of it, yeah. So I think that's part of the issue, because you can build uh, turrets with Goss, but I don't believe you can build turrets with rail guns, because they're designed a bit differently. All right. So now let's go into our Los Angeles and design our jump engines. So we're using the size five, and then all these are default. So engine size, so this kind of determines, um, so let's see, we're going from 12 up to, just to kind of show, so you can jump up the size of the engine because um, you have to have a certain size engine for your uh, ships. Now, anything below like the size has to be self jump only. You can't jump other ships with it, but you want to look at right here, this number, this tells you how big of a ship you can jump. So for an engine this small, um, you'd only be jumping like fax and fighters, like very, very small ships, like 3,000 tons is, is not much of a ship when it comes to uh, big, big ships. Now, you're still going to have some small ships like that, but we're only worried about 7,000 here. So let's see. 7,500 tons. That should give us enough. So it's, yeah. So that put, should put us right at. Uh, oh, actually, we can go a little lower. 7,100, I guess a military drive. So let's go in here. So this is a jump engine, ship size of 7,000, 7K. Uh, I guess I should put 7.1K. That's more accurate. Um, squadron size of three. Jump radius of 50. So there we go. And then I don't need the rest of this because military jump engine. I guess I should put MJE so I know it's military. And then we'll give it a company name. Bailey and North. There we go. We'll instant this. We'll unlock this class. Okay, so I hadn't locked it yet. But, uh, all right, so refresh tech and then jump engines. There we go. Uh, too small. So, okay, maybe it has to take into account with the jump engine on there. So, uh, sorry, I'm still pretty new to this game. Um, I say new, I've, I've only played a couple of uh, complete playthroughs. So there's still a lot that I have to remember. It's been a while since the last time I played. Last time I played the C Sharp version of the game was not out yet. So um, it has been a bit of a while. So let's jump this back up. So we were at 8,000 something. So let's say you want to jump at least, you know, uh, 9,500 ship. Um, we're redesigning it this way just so that way we've got a little bit more uh, room. So we might be able to put this on other ships. Military jump engine, uh, 9.5k. Then actually, I'm gonna also add. Make sure to add the weight of this thing. This is a 1.9k tons. Uh, so we'll say squadron size is three, and then we'll say squadron jump is. 50, I guess that's range, so SR, squadron range, 50, all right, and then we will keep that name from before, Bailey North, and we'll instant this one, refresh tech, and we're going to take, uh, there we go, and let me make sure I took off that jump drive, I did not, there we go, throw this guy on there. I still said it's too small. Is that really? It doesn't sound right. I'm just over. <laughs> that's uh, that's funny. I even 
beefed it up a bit because I was trying to make sure I didn't do that and I still ended up doing it anyways. <laughs> so let's go back to the jump engine tech and then we're going to go, all right, so that's all. So military jump engine, then we're going to go over here. And so that was 9,510. So we're going to beef this up a bit. The issue is the heavier the jump engine, the more you can jump, but it does make it way more because of our current efficiency. So there, this one only adds 100 tons to the total weight, but it can jump up to 10, 10 tons. Um, I don't have the uh, jump drive optimizer uh, or the engine drive optimizer installed currently. Um, last I checked that the version uh, that was out was broken, so I needed to update that. Um, so I'm going to reinstall it at some point. Until then, let's say 10K and it weighs 2K tons. Squad, squadron size of three and squadron range of 50. And it is the Balian North. So there we go. Instant that. And then refresh tech. Oh, yep, I have the jump engine here. There we go. There we go. Alright. So, now we actually have a little bit of room because this is a 10k uh, ship, so we can beef it out the rest of the way if we want to. Now, this is just a survey ship, so we're not too worried about that. Um, let's just take a look. Is there anything that would be handy? Uh, it's got decent range, um, 30 billion kilometers. I usually try to keep it at or above that. In fact, since we've got a decent amount of range, oh, actually, low maintenance life, so that's what we're going to fix next. So maintenance storage, uh, large maintenance storage, but let's see, 250 tons. That should fit. Yep, so that puts us out at four years. Let's see, that leaves us with about 75. Can we fit? Okay, so we fit a bunch of those. We don't want to do that. 50 tons, so we'll fit one of these. Let's say 4.25, 10, 5 tons, oh, just one ton over. Uh, let's remove the tiny and then put a fighter. Damn, I was hoping to fit two. So let's remove one of these. All right, so that puts us at 4.3 years, which, you know, that's not too bad. I um, think we can even drop the deployment time slightly, but we we'll probably won't drop it too much. So let's see. Instead of five years, um, we'll just, let's see. So that'd be 40, oh, 48. So that's uh, four years deployment time. Um, that'll keep us under our maintenance life and give us a little bit more freedom right here as far as weight goes. Um, in case anything changes, but I think that should be good. So we'll lock this class. We'll go over to our whoops, shipyards. All right, so this one we're upgrading, which we don't actually have to do now. So we're going to, uh, so yeah. So we'll go here and retool. Retool for the Los Angeles set activity. Yes, all right. So now we're at 10,085, which we're not too worried about. So that gives us uh, three years. And let's get it started. Let's start taking away time. Oh, we got an inactive research facility. Let's go here. Uh, we'll add it here and we'll actually sign new to here because we want to get this pretty quickly. So we add to Thompson. Production automated mines completed earth. Sweet. So we finished those. So we're still doing a research facility. And let me look at do we still have any more of our conventional? I don't believe so. Yeah, okay, sweet. No more conventional. Just wanted to double check, make sure I got it all converted. So let's see, do we want to build more automated mines? Vert mines automated. That would free up some jobs, but I think we're, yeah, we still got a lot of jobs available here on Earth. And we still got a lot of stuff uh, 
these will be depleted in a few years though so uh wouldn't be the worst idea to pump out some stuff now we are negative or actually no we're starting to go positive in ratio well so what i'm gonna do is build some financial centers um let's say build 10 at about 50 percent capacity because that's probably a few too many but i know that you know uh actually no that's probably not too many then trying to remember because i know you build a few of these and you put a few of them on different colonies and have some money come back in so it's handy to have um so we'll build a few of these while we're doing other stuff all right that actually was a lot quicker than i thought so let's build a few more how many do we currently have financial centers here on earth so that just doubled our financial centers um that's handy that brought us a lot more money so let's actually just uh pump up a few of those because you know we're a little tight on cash right now uh so let's say build 80 nope not 180 and then build it 50 percent capacity there we go that'll get done pretty quick as well all right so we complete our shipbuilding rate so let's keep going on that we should have another one yeah it's a little more expensive but that's still you know not all that unreasonable um, that should get done, yeah. So, I mean, about the same time we finish the uh, shipyard. Uh, oh, what? By the time we finish the shipyards, which should finish a little faster, yeah. So instead of taking till 41, it's taking till 40, so it's definitely handy to have. Fire control is finished. So let's actually go to our energy weapons, because I believe, yeah. So what do we want to do? I'm thinking. We get spinal mount. That's kind of handy to have. It lets you go a size. This lets you go a size up uh, than the maximum current, um, which is really cool. And that that gives you a lot more power in a ship. So you can have like Mac cannons, like they have in Halo, um, giving you a lot more powerful ships than your current tech actually normally allows. I'm gonna add new research here, and then assign new here. Make sure that that keeps growing. That should get done pretty quick anyway, so because we're already at 39. Yep, there it is. So then let's go back to energy weapons. So we got the turret tracking speed. Let's go up again. We just want to, we're eventually going to want to create uh, some sort of PDC ship. Something that can provide defense against missiles. Um, oops, forgot to re-add this as a new one. Um, because it's always handy to have an anti-missile ship. And I'm kind of a fan of the idea of very much like the Expanse, where you have a ship that spews out a lot of really fast fire um, just to create sort of a jacket of bullets that protect you from uh, enemy missiles coming in. All right, so we got that done. Uh, do we want... No, that's way too much. That would take forever. Um... So let's see, is there anything we want to create then? This could be handy, more wealth generation, um, especially because we're back to the negative. So let's do that. Uh, let's create that, there we go. Yeah, that'll get done pretty quick, so. Powered infantry armor, sweet. So more ground troop uh, uh, tech done. Let's definitely get boarding combat capability because that's something that uh, I always found very fun is uh, boarding enemy ships. So creating like very strong but very um, lightweight uh, ships that could just very quickly slam into enemies and just start boarding them. Actually, where is that? I was gonna, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gonna take a while, so actually I'm gonna sign new to this one because that's gonna take a while to complete. There we go. That is rich capacity, which we're not too worried about. And then this. Where's man? Okay, something is up with uh, my maintenance problems. I'm gonna have to look. Do we not have maintenance facilities? Uh, I actually see five, but that's probably not enough. 
let's go in here. Maintenance facilities. Uh, we'll build 95 of those. Cause that, I feel like we should have more than uh, that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll set this 25 initially, create, and then I'm gonna take 25 off each of these and probably bump that other one up to 100. Uh, oops. Up Q, and then uh, bump this up to 50. So I'm thinking that's the issue, is I don't have enough maintenance supplies to actually fix that. Uh, is my guess. So it seems weird that that ship is just not getting, yeah, it's only at 9% maintenance supplies, which, over Earth, does it make sense that it's not? Yeah, it says it's undergoing uh, repair. Over, oh, well. it's undergoing overhaul, but it's not actually being overhauled. So that may be an issue. So let's try this. Base shields complete. Uh. Is there anything else we want to go in here for now? Shield regeneration rate. That could be handy. Um, but I think instead we're going to move that into uh, somewhere over here. Maybe construction production. Shipyard operations, yeah. Let's do that. Matching scientist. There we go. Let's see how long, okay, yeah, let's sped up a little bit, but it's still gonna take a while. A few of these texts we're gonna have to balance around and add to others. All right, so there's turret tracking speed. Um, starting to get a little expensive, so let's look at possibly upgrading our tech. That'll give us a bit better uh, research. And then what we're gonna do is yeah, so we still have it on that. That's gonna be done pretty quick. All right, so there's our spinal mount. Oh. Let's see, what do we want? We want something that's gonna make it handy for us to get better ships. Uh, let's see. Want railgun tech, Goss cannons tech could be really handy, uh, especially rate of fire. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We still have 10 more. So let's do Goss cannon launch velocity. There we go. All right, we completed construction of our first Black Wolf ship. So let's take a look at our battle fleet. There we go. All right. So this guy is ready to go. Ordnance all supplied up. So, yeah. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to detach it from this fleet and we're going to uh, create a fleet. Let's rename this. This is going to be our first naval defense fleet. And let's go into command, admin command. This is going to be a naval fleet because uh, that helps with uh, lots of different stuff so like uh, engineering, tactical, reaction. Um, fleet training is actually helped by making it a training fleet, which actually, since it's going to be training early on, we're going to start it as a training fleet since it's defensive and then we'll move it to a naval fleet eventually. So let's do this. Do I have to actually manually select? Ah, yeah, 
actually select a host population. There we go. So we select Earth and then create admin. So this will be uh, the first training fleet. There we go. So that actually creates it down here. And then what we do is we move this ship down to here. Uh, oh, we'll attach from the uh, naval fleet. We'll actually delete the first naval defense fleet because we don't need it quite yet. And then bring them under the training fleet. There we go. So now this is a training fleet. So as this uh, ship can go around and um, See, is this supposed to be? All right. Um, but yeah, with this, we can actually send our fleet out to do some training. Because I believe I can give them the movement order. Wolf Earth. Active sensors on. I know there's a way. One second. Let me find the way to turn on the training. All right, welcome back, guys. Um, I was actually informed that it does not work the same way as it did in VB6, and that uh, instead of hitting a button and sending your guys to train, they actually will just kind of train on their own. Um, what I'm doing right now is just sending the ships out to uh, Venus. So let me actually go to the moon orders and move back to Earth. Uh, Um, so now they'll head back to Earth and resupply and refuel. Um, this sh is sort of just simulating a shakedown that happens on real ships. Um, it, I don't have to do it in game, but it's sort of RP. Um, so for now, all it's doing is just sort of uh, getting some shakedown, and then they should sit in Earth orbit and just sort of train. So let's let this pass a little bit, just trying to make sure that that happens. So we're at one percent. And then let's go take a look. All right, yep, so they're training over Earth right now. Um, it does count against their deployment time and everything. And I have checked, and this is actually starting to go down. It's starting to tick down, so I think I definitely needed to build uh, more maintenance facilities than what I had. Um, so as this eats away at this, this will help a lot. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Um, we are getting pretty close to the end of the cycle, so I'll probably continue on for a little bit here. Um, let's see if we can get to that before the end of this episode. That way we can have elections next episode. Uh, but we'll see. Don't want to go too much into the time because I like to keep these a little bit shorter. Closer to like 45 minute mark, not a uh, couple of hours. Uh, let's see, let's go for a larger Roman. Because we are eventually going to want to have some pretty large warships. Alright, visible light laser. So let's go back to energy weapons. Uh, there we go. Maintenance facility production completed. Uh, let's build a few more because that was uh, taking, even even with those, that was still taking quite a little bit. Um, and especially if we're going to have a lot of uh, ships here eventually as we build up our fleet, we're going to want a decent amount of these. So we're now at, I believe I built that up to 100, so let's add another 100 on there. And we've got 50%. Let's create that. There we go. That'll take a good little while. Alright, so we played Gauss Cannon Launch Velocity and Salvage Module. So let's go back to our kinetic weapons. And what do I want? You know, maybe even better railgun launch speed. And then some ordnance production wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, Although this magazine feed efficiency, actually that'd be really handy because I believe we're going to have to create some magazines for our uh, weapons here when we start making actual uh, Gauss cannons and missile launchers. 
ship building rate and 10 centimeter focus size. Let's go back to construction. That's too expensive. Uh, research rate's too expensive. Ship building rate's too expensive. All right, so let's get into maybe some more wealth generation because we are still just now starting to go positive. So let's make sure we keep that up. And then we want to build, we want to get the stabilization module because um, we're eventually going to want to stabilize the systems near us as we get closer to actually producing some of these survey carriers. So let's see. Uh, wrong section. All right, so we have completed this as well. This took a little bit. Um, so let's see. So for our first service ship, we're going to add it to the survey fleet. We'll probably just attach it after that, but this is going to be known as the Los Angeles and of course naming it after one of the random uh, Discord members. This will become known as the Los Angeles Retro Breed. So that'll be pretty awesome to have one of those going around. All right. So let's take a look, sir. Okay, I mean, it's starting to get there. Uh, it's almost finished for that ship, so we can send it back out. EM sensor ship to be. And in fact, while I'm thinking about it, even though this ship doesn't have, uh, actually it might not. I was thinking about building another one of these survey ships, but actually now that I think about it, since we're gonna have this survey vessel here, it's probably handy to not uh, build that, um, not build the old design, just cause the new one's got so much more going for it. So actually add slipway here, add slipway, try to add slipways anywhere that we're not currently doing anything, just cause while it's not that handy for the commercial ships, it's nice to be able to build a lot of military ships quickly if we need to. And we are still gonna add some slipways to the commercial ones in case we need to build a few more. Um, so let's actually look, our freighters, are they still going? Let's see, movement orders, yeah. So they're still moving some automated mines. So let's take a look. We got seven so far, so it's gonna take a little while. But uh, starting to get some mining going. The mash driver's pumping out some. Eventually we'll probably move some more mass drivers over um, as we, you know, start to build up more and more of these mines and it starts uh, getting some more of that sent over. We handy, so Goss can complete. All right. Don't think we're gonna get to the next election. So uh, when we get there, when I'm recording next episode, we will, uh, I'll, I'll stop recording at that point and uh, hit everyone up on the discord so we can have our next round of elections but until then thank you guys for watching i will see you guys next time